Welcome to my YouTube channel, so Kant here. So let's try to learn about most happening topic called as agentic AI. So to learn about agentic AI, we need to understand about AI, generative AI and then agentic AI. So let's see what we will be learning in this particular video. First, we will be learning about narrow AI, general AI and super AI. And within narrow AI, so this is what we will be learning, like what is ML, what is DL. So within DL, we got generative AI. We understand prompt engineering, RAG, agentic AI. And within agentic AI, we are doing agentic AI with the help of coding. And we do agentic AI with the help of zero coding using Langflow. So this is the overall agenda which we are planning to study today. So but before we are learning about, so like agentic AI, let's understand it. So now there are three types of AI, narrow general and a super AI. So narrow AI is having an ability only to learn it. So if I'm trying to give a data, it is able to learn it. It doesn't have any rationality. If I say A for umbrella, it's going to learn A for umbrella. It may not start questioning me. Hey, you are saying A for umbrella. It's need to be A for apple. It may not question me like that. Whatever the data you train, it's going to learn it. That's the reason if you are using ChatGPT, if you are using Gemini, if the data is bad, it's going to give you the bad responses it going to give you the bad answers so if the data is outdated it going to give you the outdated answers so the narrow ai is called as an ability to learn currently we are in an era of narrow ai so whether you are using agentic ai or generative ai whatever the ai you name it we are in the era of narrow ai and then we got general ai so companies are trying to work and they are investing a lot of money on general ai so like they may get to a general AI or they may not even. So now they are trying to, it's a research area, they are working on it. What is general AI? The ability to learn, to think, to invent, and even to solve complex problems greater than a human. We call it as general AI. And then we got super AI, anything beyond a human intelligence, we are able to call it as your super AI. We don't know when it's going to happen. Researchers are saying like, we may get super AI, maybe around 2050, we may be into the era of super AI. Now, whatever the bubble we have around AI is related to your narrow AI. So now this narrow AI again contains two parts. One is called machine learning. Another one is called as deep learning. So machine learning is mostly used in order to perform an intelligence or automations around the structured data, like an Excel sheet. So where you, you can take your medical data, which is in rows and columns, or you're able to take your sales data, where you're able to take your any of the numerical data, you're able to start building intelligence with the help of machine learning. No, I want to build an intelligence related to images. I want to uh, analyze a face, or I want to say whether the person is happy happy or sad. If I want to do this kind of image related, video related, audio related, I need to knock the door of deep learning. So within this deep learning, again, you have two steps. So I'm not getting into the another one called as discriminative AI. So we are discussing about generative AI. What is a discriminative AI is? If I'm showcasing an image, it can say, hey, whether it is a good image, bad image, happy, sad, or we can say like a cat or a dog. We are able to make this kind of state we call it as discriminative AI. Whereas generative AI is, if you are able to give one part of the data, it can start generating another part of the data. If you take chat GPT, but if you are able to type, hey, create an image of Elon Musk, all right, let's go and say Elon Musk. So it's going to start, if I give one part of the data, it is able to start generating another part of the data. It is able to do that. So we are able to call it as what? You are a generative AI. You are able to ask, hey, can you write down a code for your particular Python? It is able to do it. So we are able to call it as what? Generative AI. So now discriminative AI is, hey, this guy is called as Elon Musk, tagging a friend. Or hey, this person is this. So hey, this guy is male or a female or a cat or a dog, discriminative AI. So generative AI is more of, so like generating your text, generating your video, generating your code, whatever it is, we are able to call it as your generative AI. Now within this generative AI, we got another segment which we are able to call it as, so within generative AI, there are three levels. One is prompt engineering. Another one is called as RAG. Another one is called as agent AI. So what is a prompt engineering is, now you are trying to fine tune your behavior of your AI models with the help of the prompt you're writing. So basically we write a 
text so based on that it is doing a particular action so whatever the text you are giving is one part of the data from that it is generating another part of the data now that one part is more like an instructions you are giving to the ai or that is the input it is understanding what it need to do or what it need to generate with the help of the instructions you are giving or we call them as prompts now i'm saying hey create an image of Steve Jobs, for example, Steve Jobs and Elon Musk with high quality sitting inside Tesla, for example. I'm saying, hey, create an image of Steve Jobs. This is called prompt. Now, uh, what exactly we are doing in a prompt engineering is, so now, for example, whenever we ask a question to chat GPT or whatever it is, it is able to start giving a very big paragraph. I don't want a big paragraph. I want a smaller answers and I want to say thanks for asking Kant or thanks for watching my YouTube video. In this way, I want to customize the way the outcome this LLM models are giving or this generative way is giving. I can use prompt engineering and this is very much needed. The reason why is now you can use generative way for two things. You can use generative generative AI for productivity, you can use generative AI for the sake of developing a chatbot to a company. I want to build a chatbot to a company. I want a prompt engineer. Why? You want to understand what questions the users are asking, how I need to give a response. So this kind of prompt engineering I need to do. That is the first level. And the second level is called as RAG. So what exactly meant by RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. So RAG is called as you are giving external data or we call context. If you are asking any question to your LLM, it going to search that particular external document and give you responses from that external document. So we call it as RAG. Now we most of the companies like bookings.com or if you take hospitals or if you take insurance agencies, I want to ask you questions related to insurance of that company. I can build a rag or I want to ask questions about reviews of a company I can ask rag or I can use rag in this way we are able to use rag we are able to use prompt engineering to perform the activities and finally we got agentic AI so with the help of agentic AI what you are able to do if you are able to give one part of the data it can start generating another part of the data so we are able to call it as your agentic AI so now for example now, I'm able to give one part of the data, so I'm just importing a data set. And I'm just saying, hey, can you create a report based on about data set and give me for download? When I'm just asking create, can you create a report on about data set and give me for download. So now if you are able to see it is analyzing and it is able to give me a response. If I just click on this arrow button, it is start writing down the coding. Now, the difference between generative AI and agentic AI is in a generative AI, if you are able to give one part, it can generate an image, it can generate a text for you. But in agentic AI, so now when I'm asking a task, when I'm asking a question or a prompt, it is completing a task form. It is writing down the code, it is executing it, it is importing the data, it's going to do all that activities. And finally, it's going to complete a task. So agentic AI is more revolved around task completion, whereas generative AI is more around you are performing a particular, generating an image or generating a video or generating a particular coding. But whereas agentic AI is, it uses generative AI plus tools. So it is trying to take the input from the user. It is trying to take the help of generative AI and it is trying to complete a task with the help of the tools. So we are calling it as agentic AI. These are the three levels we have it in agentic AI. Now, see this. Here, the same thing I'm doing. Now, this is a code driven. I'm trying to call my generative AI model. So we are able to call OpenAI. So I'm using my API key and I'm calling major purposes. I want to generate a report. To generate a report, I want to take the help of my LLM model or I want to take the help of generative AI model. That's what I'm doing at code line number six. And then I'm using PDF. The reason why is, so now I want to, whatever the report I'm generating, I want to export it as a PDF. For that, I'm creating a file 
function to export as a PDF. That is a function I'm doing at line number seven. And then I'm trying to use a tool. So now whatever the P function I created, I want to use it within this particular, um, what is that, within the tool so that what we can do now, this tool is helping us to perform, to generate a report. And after generating a report, that report need to be fed to your save PDF. So we are able to save it as a PDF and we are able to uh, export it into our system. So now within your agentic AI, you have a tool. So now the tool going to, that tool can be anything. That tool can be SQL tool where it can take the information from generative AI. It can run it inside an SQL or you are able to use generative AI plus a Python programming environment where it is able to do it or it can be your web development environment it can write a code it can run the code and we are able to get a UI around it so we call agentic AI so the difference between gen AI and agentic AI is so generative AI when you ask a question it is able to give a response but whereas agentic AI when you ask a question the response is fed into a tool and the tool completes a task for us for the user so that without any involvement of first we are able to do it now see this with the help of chat gpt we have done the same thing yes if we see this airline report now it is able to generate a report for us if i just click on click here to download airlines report it is able to download a report for us if i just open it in my system i'm able to see airline report if i click on it we are able to see an airline report, something. It created a report with the help of PDF. So it is performing a task. So in order to perform a task, what is the tool? This chart GPT 4.0 contains internally a tool called as programming environment. Now it is using programming environment. It is running internally. You want to create a QR code? Yes, it can do it. So with the help of agent. So now chart GPT 4.0 is an agentic AI. It's not just a generative AI. So the difference is this. Now you can build various agentic AI with a coding like this or you are able to develop agentic AI with the help of a platform called Langflow. I can just simply log into the Langflow. I can get started for free and I can sign in. So whenever you are clicking on a new flow, you are able to get three options. So prompt engineering, vector store rag and a simple agent. Now in order to store or in order to have your vector store, we will be using Astra, that one, the one which we saw it earlier. Now I want to create a simple agent. Either you can click on a simple agent from here and you can start doing it. Now here calculator is your tool or you can start creating your agents with a template. I can just go back to your DS data stacks and here I can click on new flow. So now here, if you are able to go back to your assistants, you are able to see various templates. I want to use YouTube analysis or I want to use SEO keyword calic generator or I'm able to use sequential task agent. For example, I want to create a sequential task agent or a marketing agent. Now, these are the various activities. So every agent comprises of, I'm able to just zoom it a bit. There is a prompt. You have an agent, so like where exactly you are having your LLM model. And in order to perform a task, you're going to have your tools. So you, they're going to be tools. And with the help of tools, you are able to perform the activity. You have your calculators and all the stuff. You are able to find it. So in this way, you can start developing agents right here. And by giving your API key, if you just click on your playground, you're able to start interacting with your agents and you can start using it. In this way, you can build, for example, agents with the help of Langflow, or you can build agents with the help of programming. There are various libraries like Autogen and all that. Or we are able to, for example, use ChatGPT, which is an agent. Basically, if, if someone is building an agent, they don't, the goal is not just to use an agent for their day-to-day -day work, but to automate the business flows. So in order to automate the business, business flows, it's going to trigger various financial benefits. For that, we are able to leverage our agent AI or we are able to use agent. So this is not a pure uh, means like class on top of how to use Langflow or how to use programming, just a high level understanding on what is agents. Now on the next videos, we will be learning about, so what exactly this uh, Langflow is, how to do this Langflow or how to do this with the help of your programming using various libraries, we'll be exploring on the next videos. I hope you got a clear understanding about what is agentic AI. So what is generative AI and what are the three levels of AI we have it. And in case if you have any questions or anything, you can share your reviews in the comment section and you can share me the kind of topics you are interested in so that I can make a content around it. Thank you so much.